OpenAI has announced the introduction of its groundbreaking generative artificial intelligence model, Sora, showcasing the United States' technological prowess and innovation in the field of AI. This development has put pressure on China's tech industry, underscoring the competitive tension in AI, not just in business, but as a pivotal aspect of global power dynamics. An online article titled The Emergence of Sora Widens the IT Gap Between China and the U.S. to 50 Years has resonated emotionally with the Chinese people, suggesting that Sora's debut signifies a growing divide in AI capabilities between China and the United States. The development of artificial intelligence, which relies heavily on GPUs, is likely to be further constrained by U.S. restrictions on export of high-end GPU chips, and possibly even on data circulation. The article argues that Sora's emergence virtually eliminates opportunities for AI startups in China, emphasizing the significant impact of video model training and generation on computational resources, and suggesting that China's IT sector might be 50 years behind the U.S. Netizens have pointed out that China's self-imposed isolation in the field of AI is also problematic. Relying on domestic capabilities alone is insufficient for AI development, which requires extensive use of foreign software. For students and small companies without special access, this software remains inaccessible due to internet censorship, raising questions about the feasibility of AI advancements under these conditions. Some comments reflect a sentiment that China is perpetually playing catch-up in the field of information technology and the internet, with AI now adding to the challenge and widening the gap even further. Over the past year, the contrast in capital and technological direction between China and the United States in the field of AI has become starkly apparent. In the first month of 2024 alone, OpenAI's release of a new advanced video model has demonstrated the power of artificial intelligence prompting even Elon Musk to acknowledge humanity's conceding to AI. Huotai Junan Securities highlights three standout features of Sora, its ability to maintain smoothness and stability in 60-second long videos, its multi-angle shots within a single video, and its realistic handling of details such as light reflection and motion, significantly enhancing realism. Just look at how popular Sora has become. Every video it generates goes viral instantly. The Chinese film and television industry has also felt a significant impact. Many people say that with the powerful capabilities Sora has demonstrated today, it will soon be possible to produce movies by simply inputting scripts, potentially rendering many people in the film industry jobless. At the end of 2022, OpenAI released a large learning model ChatGPT chatbot fundamentally transforming the tech industry and showcasing the potential of artificial intelligence to the world. Last year, China's 360 company also officially announced that it has accelerated the development of its large learning model. Zhou Hongyi, founder of 360, expressed on February 16th that OpenAI likely possesses additional undisclosed technologies including potential advancements like GPT-5 or self-learning mechanisms for content creation. He referred to OpenAI CEO Altman as a master marketer, adept at controlling the narrative, suggesting that the full extent of OpenAI's capabilities has yet to be unveiled. This implies that the gap in AI technology between China and the United States may continue to widen. In a personal Weibo post, Joe stated that the ultimate measure of tech competition is the concentration and depth of talent. He noted that AI might not immediately revolutionize all industries, but it has the potential to significantly boost human creativity. Moreover, Joe mentioned that despite the appearance of domestic models nearing the capabilities of GPT 3.5, They are, in fact, still about a year and a half behind GPT-4.0. On February 18th, Oppo founder Chen Mingyong announced in an internal letter that 2024 marks the beginning of the AI smartphone era, signaling a rapid approach to a new phase in AI integration with mobile technology. From the perspective of market performance, 
Supermicro has seen an increase of over 770% in its stock prices in the past 12 months, with an overall growth exceeding 100 times. Microsoft, leveraging ChatGPT, has doubled its stock value, surpassing Apple to become the world's most valuable tech company. NVIDIA, controlling about 80% of the high-end AI chip market, experienced a sudden surge in market value, with its stock price increasing by 240% last year and an additional 47% increase this year. This growth has positioned NVIDIA ahead of Amazon and Google, making it the world's third largest tech stock. Concurrently, there are rumors that OpenAI plans to develop its AI chips and has begun raising substantial funds to build its chip factory. According to a report by the Wall Street Journal on February 8th, OpenAI CEO Sam Altman is in negotiations with investors, including those from the UAE, to raise trillions of dollars aimed at enhancing global chip manufacturing capabilities. An insider suggested that the project could require funding up to $5 to $7 trillion. The Washington Post reported at the end of January that Altman discussed chip manufacturing operations with U.S. Congress members, potentially collaborating with companies like TSMC. The market value of American AI represents more than 50% of the global total. In 2023, several U.S. AI companies saw significant stock price increases, clearly indicating that Wall Street's capital market has financially backed the AI boom. In less than 15 months, benefiting from generative AI, these companies have seen their market values increase by trillions of dollars. Not only have the companies profited, but their CEOs have also seen a substantial increase in their net worth. Bloomberg reported that nearly all the wealth gained by U.S. billionaires this year is related to AI. Bloomberg data shows that among the world's 500 richest individuals, 30 have seen their wealth benefit from AI, with a majority being American entrepreneurs. In contrast, in 2023, the Chinese AI industry experienced a downturn in both investment volume and value, with significant market value losses, including some companies seeing their value halved. This is believed to be a result of U.S. export controls preventing Chinese chip companies from accessing the most advanced chips and technology placing China's leading chip manufacturers in a difficult position. According to a CB Insights report, last year, the number of AI investments in China was approximately 232, a 38% decline year over year, with total funding amounting to around $2 billion, marking a 70% decrease from the previous year. Particularly in the first quarter of 2023, both the amount and volume of financing hit a five-year low. CamberCon, a leading Chinese chip manufacturer, recently announced that it expects its 2023 revenue to be between 680 million yuan and 720 million yuan, with a projected net loss ranging from 106 million US dollars to 130 million US dollars, narrowing its year-over-year -year loss by 27% to 40%. CamberCon's stock price fell nearly 15% from the beginning of 2024 to the Chinese Lunar New Year. In mid-December 2022, the U.S. Department of Commerce added several Chinese semiconductor companies, including CamberCon, to its entity list, citing their involvement in the research, development, and sale of AI chips and attempts to use U.S. origin goods to support China's military modernization efforts which contradicts U.S. national security and foreign policy interests. SMIC, another semiconductor industry leader, recently reported a 13% decrease in annual revenue to $6.3 billion for 2023, with net profits dropping by 50% to $900 million, and its gross margin halving to 19%. Similarly, the U.S. government has placed SMIC on the entity list due to its alleged ties with the Chinese military, restricting its access to U.S. technology. Overall, despite the apparent frenzy in China's AI large model market over the past year, there exists a significant gap between the Chinese and U.S. AI markets. The high-end chip industry also cannot escape geopolitical issues, 
especially with the United States employing harsh measures in recent years to hinder the development of China's chip and AI industries. Why is the U.S. containing China's high-tech developments? Many experts believe China's technological and military advancements pose a threat to the security of other nations. A report from the U.S. Department of Defense notes that the CCP's, quote, ambitions and intentions are becoming increasingly clear, end quote, as Beijing seeks to reshape the international order to further its authoritarian regime and national interests. With China's growing national strength, the CCP is more willing and able to use intimidation coercion to eliminate perceived threats to its interests and advance its strategic objectives globally. The Stanford University 2023 AI Index Report states, AI is expected to become a crucial component of economic and military power in the near future. The development of AI will reshape the geopolitical landscape. Hence, the CCP is competing with the U.S. for dominance in AI. To limit the CCP's development of AI technology, the U.S. has implemented export controls on advanced chips, restricting the CCP's access to advanced computational chips, development and maintenance of supercomputers, and manufacturing of advanced semiconductors for military and other purposes. Moreover, the threat from the CCP to the U.S. and global security also stems from China's years of covertly establishing a spy network throughout Western society. According to a report published by Microsoft on February 14th, hackers supported by the governments of Russia, China, Iran, and North Korea continue to exploit vulnerabilities in computer systems using Microsoft-funded OpenAI tool ChatGBT, prepare phishing operations to steal sensitive information, or disable antivirus software and deceive their targets. Microsoft's report tracked hacker organizations affiliated with the Russian military intelligence, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, and the governments of China and North Korea, finding they attempted to enhance their hacking techniques using large language models. The Charcoal Typhoon Organization, believed to be closely associated with the Chinese authorities, used ChatGPT to detect vulnerabilities and predict possible cyber attack operations. In an interview with the media on February 14th, Lin Hongwen, a senior financial journalist and columnist, stated that de-risking has become the new consensus dominating Western relations with China. After being blocked by Western countries, it has become difficult for China's technology sector to develop. Lin remarked that the world used to be globalized where everyone could freely use equipment, parts, and software produced by various countries to develop their unique features and advantages. Globalization was achieved by leveraging individual advantages to create value. Lin believes that the challenge of having to produce everything domestically is significant. He doesn't necessarily say China will fail, but he thinks this challenge will undoubtedly slow down the development of high tech in mainland China. Lin observed that the CCP faces significant barriers in leveraging the foundational advancements made by others a strategy that previously enabled China to amplify its strengths. With these foundational elements now compromised, China is tasked with constructing its capabilities from the ground up. Embarking on a journey to match global advancements independently presents a formidable challenge for China, one that will, at the very least, decelerate its developmental pace. On January 27th, the Peking University Alumni Association in Nanjing held its 2024 Chinese New Year celebration event. A speech by Professor Zhou Feng, a renowned international relations scholar from Nanjing University, was leaked. He advised the importance of viewing issues from both a Chinese perspective and a global perspective, emphasizing the need for a clear understanding of the real state of China-U.S. competition and the existence of significant gaps to four major areas. Zhou Feng asserted that fundamental improvements in China-U.S. relations are improbable within five or ten years. He stated that the U.S. policy towards China has shifted, firmly positioning China as a 21st century's greatest strategic competitor to the U.S., thus the biggest threat and potential enemy. According to Zhou Feng's research, the U.S. leads China in four major areas, 
First, in global technological innovation and advanced manufacturing, the U.S. remains at the forefront with Europe, Japan, and South Korea comprising the second tier and China in the third tier, transitioning from mid-low to mid-high end. Second, the U.S. holds a dominant position in currency and finance as not only is it the world's largest economy, but the U.S. dollar remains the most significant reserve and circulation currency, essential for global financial stability. He noted that despite years of internationalization efforts, the Chinese yuan accounts for only 3.3% of global currency circulation, compared to the U.S. dollar's 62.8%. The third gap lies in the U.S. having 47 staunch allies globally, including major economies like Europe and Japan, whereas the CCP's allies range from Iran to North Korea, Venezuela, and Syria. The fourth gap between China and the U.S. is a realm of discourse. Zhou Feng highlighted, We think we've done very well over the years, boasting about how good China is worldwide. But in international relations, as in social relations, does proclaiming oneself as a good person ensure others will agree? He emphasized that the competition in power between U.S. and China today is not merely a comparison of strength, but also involves international influence. He further analyzed that China's economy performed poorly last year, partly due to a shift in U.S. attitude. China-U.S. trade fell by 21% last year, and U.S. investment in China plummeted by 87%. Last year, China's foreign investment attraction regressed to the level of 28 years ago, barely reaching the level of 1998. He also advised the young talents of Peking University to maintain an objective, sober, and accurate international awareness and worldview. We need to learn to view the world from China's perspective, and even more so to the view of China from a global perspective. Public records indicate that Zhou Feng is the executive dean of the School of International Relations at Nanjing University, the executive director of the Nanjing University China South Sea Research Cooperation Innovation Center, a member of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Advisory Committee on Maritime Issues, and a special research fellow at the Contemporary World Research Center of the International Department. Therefore, he is considered an insider scholar at the level of national advisor to the CCP. As an official within the CCP system, Zhou Feng's express facts and viewpoints led many netizens to feel that he did not address the core issues. A netizen named Daniel Fang commented on X that the speaker, being within the country, could not discuss many topics openly. The deepest cause of the CCP's current economic difficulties lies in its political system. The one-party dictatorship inevitably leads to national decline and regression, along with Xi Jinping's personal ambitions. From systemic and personal perspectives, the CCP's approach is fundamentally aimed at opposing and defeating the U.S. So why should others assist China? Others commented that, essentially, as long as the Chinese Communist Party remains in power, its international credibility is completely non-existent. As long as the CCP governs, there's no hope for China-U.S. relations to improve.